The Magic of Numbers Part 2 Exploring the basics of numbers and their significance in the universe underscore. Greetings, dear friends. I am Zoran, your wise and humble dragon, here to guide you through the enchanted world of numbers. Sit tight on my back, for this journey will take us through time, across lands, and even into the stars. Numbers are more than mere tools for counting, they are the very magic that holds the universe together. Our first stop. Let's travel back in time to the very beginning of numbers. The dawn of numbers, thousands of years ago, long before humans had books or computers. They lived in the fertile lands of Mesopotamia. It was here, among the rivers and cities, that the ancient Sumerians first unlocked the magic of numbers. Close your eyes and imagine a bustling city with stone streets and tall ziggurats reaching for the sky. The people of Sumer were farmers, merchants, and builders, but they needed a way to keep track of their crops, goods, and trade. What did they do? They created a system of numbers, one based on 60. This system might seem strange to you now, but it's why we have 60 minutes in an hour and 360 degrees in a circle. The Sumerians were some of the very first humans to realize that numbers could help them shape the world. And so, with a sweep of my wings, we see how numbers began to influence time and space. The power of 10. Now, let's glide forward in time, across oceans, to the land of ancient India. Here, another brilliant discovery was made. The people of India gave us something we still use today, the decimal system. Numbers like 1, 2, and 3 may seem simple, but what if I told you they were part of a much bigger magic trick? This system is based on 10, and it includes something truly special zero, R0. Zero. It might seem like nothing, but without it, we wouldn't be able to write large numbers or even perform most of the mathematics we know today. Indian mathematicians, such as the wise Brahmagupta, were the first to see zero as not just an empty space, but as a number with great potential. With zero, the doors to modern mathematics were thrown open. Imagine a world where numbers could grow endlessly, all thanks to this one simple idea, the power of 10. Pythagoras and the harmony of numbers, now, hold on tight as we soar across the Mediterranean to ancient Greece. Ah, Greece a land of philosophers, scientists, and a man named Pythagoras. Pythagoras believed that the entire universe could be understood through numbers. He was fascinated by how numbers connected everything, from the planets in the sky to the notes of music. I'll let you in on a secret. Pythagoras loved triangles. He discovered something extraordinary what we now call the Pythagorean Theorem. Imagine a right-angled triangle. Pythagoras found that if you square the lengths of the two shorter sides and add them together, you'll get the square of the longest side, the hypotenuse. Isn't that amazing? Pythagoras and his followers believed that numbers held the key to the harmony of the universe. They thought that the planets, the stars, and even our souls were connected by mathematical ratios. As a dragon who's flown across countless stars, I can tell you that there's something magical about how numbers create harmony. The birth of zero, as we journey further, let me tell you about a number that took centuries to be recognized, a number that changed everything, zero. You see, in many ancient civilizations, People had a hard time understanding nothing. After all, how could nothing be a number? But in ancient India, around the 7th century, a brilliant mathematician, Brahmagupta, realized that zero could be much more than just a placeholder. It could stand on its own, as a number with its own meaning. This idea of zero soon traveled from India through the Islamic world, where scholars embraced it, and eventually, it reached Europe. From then on, Zero became a cornerstone of mathematics, unlocking new ways of thinking and calculating. Without zero, we wouldn't have the numbers we use today, nor could we understand the vastness of space. It is truly a magical number, one that opened the door to endless possibilities. Numbers in nature. Now, as we glide over fields of flowers, look closely at their petals. Have you ever noticed that flowers often have three, five, eight, or 13 petals. This is no accident. These numbers come from a pattern called the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers 
where each number is the sum of the two before it. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. Th you can find this sequence everywhere in nature. It's in the spirals of seashells, the arrangement of pine cones, and even in the galaxies in the sky. The Fibonacci sequence is nature's way of revealing the hidden mathematical order behind everything. Conclusion Numbers as the language of the universe. As we circle back to the present, remember this. Numbers are not just tools for counting, they are the very language of the universe. They shape time, space, music, and nature. From the ancient Sumerians to the Fibonacci sequence, numbers have always been a magical force connecting everything around us. And so, dear friends, our journey through the magic of numbers has only just begun. There are more wonders to explore, more secrets to uncover. Let's continue together, for the universe is vast, and numbers will always guide our way. With each flap of my wings, I've taken you through the true history of numbers, bringing together stories and discoveries from across time. And there are still many more wonders waiting in the magical world of mathematics. Patterns in the stars. Let's continue with Zoran the Dragon, narrating the next chapter. Patterns in the stars. Understanding patterns and sequences through constellations and star formations underscore. Welcome back, my brave adventurers, as we take to the skies once more. Let me guide you through one of my favorite places, the night sky. Look up with me and see the stars twinkling like jewels on a vast, black canvas. They aren't just scattered randomly across the sky. No, there are hidden patterns, stories, and mathematical secrets waiting to be uncovered. Together, we'll explore the ancient constellations, the sequences that bind them, and the wonders of star formations, the magic of constellations. Let's begin by traveling to the ancient world, where humans looked up at the same sky and saw pictures among the stars. They connected these stars like dots in a grand cosmic game and formed constellations groups of stars that, when traced together, formed images of animals, gods, and heroes. The ancient Greeks, Egyptians, Babylonians, and many other cultures created constellations to help navigate their world. Sailors used the stars to guide them across the seas, and farmers relied on the stars to tell when to plant crops. The stars were their map and calendar. Take Orion, for example, one of the most famous constellations. It's named after a hunter from Greek mythology. If you follow the three bright stars that make up Orion's belt, you'll find even more patterns. The Orion Nebula, a place where new stars are born, shines brightly just beneath his belt. But constellations aren't just about stories. They reveal something far more magical a cosmic order. You see, even the distances between these stars follow patterns, star clusters and sequences. Now, let's fly deeper into the galaxy, where the stars gather in groups called star clusters. These clusters are not random, oh no. They form according to gravitational patterns, pulling stars together in beautiful formations. One of the most famous clusters is the Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters. It's a bright cluster of stars that has been observed for thousands of years, mentioned in stories from Japan, Greece, and even the Maori of New Zealand. But star clusters also teach us something incredible about the lifespan of stars. Inside these clusters, stars are born, live, and eventually die in cycles. Astronomers call this sequence of stellar evolution the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. This diagram shows us how stars of different sizes and temperatures follow specific paths during their lifetimes. It's like a cosmic roadmap for understanding the birth and death of stars. Patterns in star formation. As we glide through the galaxy, let's take a closer look how stars are born. In regions called stellar nurseries, like the famous Orion Nebula, clouds of gas and dust collapse under their own gravity, forming new stars. These stars don't just form one by one, they often form in clusters, following specific patterns. This process is called genes instability, named after Sir James Genes, who described the mathematical conditions under which a cloud of gas will begin to collapse and form stars. The stars that form in these clusters often follow a sequence in size and temperature. The bigger and hotter a star, the shorter its life. 
Massive blue stars burn brightly, but live only a few million years, while smaller red stars can live for billions of years. And here's the best part, these patterns of star formation and lifespans can be predicted using mathematical models.